Chinese wet markets are usually open-air markets that sell fresh seafood, meat, fruits, and vegetables. Some wet markets sell and slaughter live animals on site, and a few sell wild animals and their meat. The wild animal section of the market in Wuhan, that is believed to be the origin of the virus that causes COVID-19, included snakes, beavers, porcupines, and baby crocodiles. Wild animal meat or bush meat can also be found for sale throughout India, Latin America, and Africa. Press continue to find out more. The coronavirus that causes COVID-19 belongs to a family of viruses that normally cause mild respiratory disease in mammals. These can cross from animals to humans and cause what are known as zoonotic diseases. As a result of genetic sequencing, we are able to get a good idea of the origins of zoonotic coronaviruses. For example, MERS or Middle East Respiratory Syndrome is believed to have originated in camels, and the 2003 SARS outbreak or Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome is believed to have jumped to humans from civets. Your first impression of the patient is crucial when dealing with COVID-19. Documentation of the impression formed after assessment is essential. This can include a differential diagnosis, which can be ruled in or out to support a diagnosis of COVID-19. This may include respiratory tract infections or seasonal flu, but it is important to consider rare presentations or conditions associated with COVID-19, such as loss of taste and smell, new onset of confusion, diarrhea and vomiting. Or some types of skin rash. Press continue to find out more. At the time of writing, rapid point of care COVID nineteen tests are not widely available, and there may be some delay between a patient's swab test and the results, with COVID and non COVID patients together on the same cohort ward. It is absolutely vital to avoid spreading in these areas with rigorous cleaning and aseptic procedures. Be particularly careful to avoid spreading caused by the equipment used for observations. The four phases of critical illness are rescue, optimization, stabilization, and de-escalation. Select each of the links to find out more. The rescue phase describes the initial minutes to hours of care. The hemodynamic monitoring during this phase includes basic tools to monitor continuous non-invasive blood pressure, respiratory rate, oxygen saturation, arterial blood gas (ABG), temperature, and electrocardiogram (ECG). The News Two chart is the most commonly used documentation tool for this type of monitoring. News Two enables clear documentation of the objective recordings while visually identifying trends, and when combined with local escalation protocols, can aid in identifying sepsis. The optimization phase, which is time limited to an initial 24 hours, has the goal of reaching optimal perfusion of peripheral tissue and recompensing any oxygen debt incurred through the course of illness. Routine use of arterial lines and central venous catheters are common in patients requiring assisted ventilation, and recommended for therapy requiring vasopressors, which increase blood pressure. Vasopressors or inotropes are normally initiated only after an appropriate fluid challenge fails to restore organ perfusion, to ensure that the patient reaches the third phase of care. For the most critically ill COVID-19 patients requiring extracorporeal membrane oxygenation (ECMO), tissue oximetry monitoring may enable early identification of cerebral desaturations and limb ischemia. ECMO was initially used on ARDS patients, and during the H1N1 influenza pandemic, which showed a survival rate of 72.5 percent, albeit with prolonged hospitalizations. During the de-escalation phase, care shifts from aggressive resuscitation to a state of healing. Hemodynamic monitoring provides continuous data on the patient response during weaning off therapies such as mechanical ventilation, 
vasoactive medications and removal of fluid to reduce any positive fluid balance. Additionally, hemodynamic monitoring may provide early recognition of development of cognitive impairment, cardiac dysfunction and blood pressure abnormalities.